Hello everyone. So I've been playing Historic Ranked both in Best Settle 1 and Best Settle 3. What I've seen was that there were a lot of life gain decks. The, the reason for the life gain's popularity has to be because of the new car that came out, which is quite busted in my opinion. It's called Voice of the Blessed. It's a 2 mana 2-2 two -two Spirit Cleric. Uh, whenever you gain life, you put a plus one plus one counter on itself. It's it's basically a Johnny's primate cousin, but this cousin is much more powerful. Whenever you gain four or more counters on it, it gains flying and vigilance, and as long as it has ten or more, it becomes indestructible. So, so because of this card, there's a lot of variants of um, there's angel decks that play this. Uh, there's the, the the infinite scroll combo that plays this card. There's also just the um, the casual life gain deck with the soul warden, and you just have a Johnny's Pride Mate, Voice of the Blessed, Trellasara on top of that. So there's a lot of life gain decks, and especially the infinite combo version, a lot of decks that can't really handle that. But I got a solution. I've got a solution. So life gain decks have existed before, and there's a certain card called Hushbringer here, as you can see, that completely gatekeeps whatever they're trying to do. This strategy has existed before when life gain was popular. The text on it is quite restrictive. Creatures entering the battlefield or dying don't cause abilities tr to trigger. And enter the battlefield effect on a creature is a very common theme in Historic at the moment. You have the Shaman's deck, you have the angels, you have the life gain deck, and then you have the humans deck. And any decks that play Skyclave Apparition, any creatures deck that play Skyclave Apparition. And that's basically 90% of the playing field. So if you play if your deck can actually play Hushbringer in main deck, then a lot of times when you play this card, the opponent will automatically concede. So the strength of this deck comes from the fact that it can play Hushbringer in mainboard. Obviously, one thing to watch out for is Kaya's Ghost Form doesn't go incredibly well against Hushbringer because Kaya's Ghost Form says, when Enchanted Permanent dies or put into exile, return that card to the battlefield under your control. But Hushbringer says that creatures dying don't cause abilities to trigger, right? So if your creature gets destroyed when Hushbringer is on the field, it doesn't come back. But if you're versing a white creature deck, usually their removal spell is Skyclave Apparition, Brutal Cathar, things like that, that exile, or even Portable Hole. So, so Hushbringer already stops Sky, Skyclave Apparition and Brutal Cathar. So in cases like Portable Hole, if your opponent portable holds your Hushbringer, and if Kaya's Ghost Form happens to be attached to Hushbringer, it actually comes back from it because Kaya's Ghost Form also lets exiled cards to return to the battlefield. So there is actually an upside to playing Kaya's Ghost Form along with Hushbringer. And not only that, you don't have to play Hushbringer if you if you aren't facing those type of decks. You can just hold on to it. And just play Core Spirit Dancer and SRAM and just attach Kai's Ghost Form onto it. And after you draw a billion cards, you just discard them to the graveyard because you don't need it. So what does this deck beat? So it beats any of the creature decks that we've mentioned already. And it also beats things like that play Dragonstorm. Because the Hushbringer stops the, the enter the battle effect from happening for the Dragonstorm deck to infinitely damage you. It also has a really good matchup against control decks because of Kaya's Ghost Form and Claim to Fame. Because of all the recursion, has a really good matchup against the Mizzets. So what does this deck lose to? So in best set of one, the things that you would have to watch out for would be like a reanimator deck. If they happen to reanimate on turn 3, that would be really devastating. Another deck that would be something like Celesnia Enchantress decks that play 9 lives. Because if they play 9 lives, you have no chance of winning at that, at that point. But aside from that, it has a pretty good matchup across the board. That's all I have to talk about for best out of 1. And this list here is for best out of 3. So I didn't change anything about this deck. 
but I'm just letting you guys all know that this deck is still really great in best of three. I have a whole cyborg guy video on this deck, so do check it out. And again, it has really great matchup against the the life gain squirrel combo because they can't actually get rid of Hushbringer. So you just bring in three copies of Hushbringer. So I do I did actually in the sidebar guide, I don't talk about the squirrel combo because squirrel combo is kind of a recent thing. So I'm going to go over it right now. So all you have to do is bring in three copies of Hushbringer and you want to take out a Curse of Silence. You want to put in three copies of Portable Hole and you want to take out Claim to Fame because they do not play any destroy creature cards. They don't have any spot removal aside from Skyclave Apparition and sometime maybe Brutal Cathar or they could even bring in Portable Hole if they have it. But usually they don't play it because they are a collected company deck that likes to play a lot of creatures. And then you want to take out two copies of Thoughtseize and a copy of Sethus because we are bringing in extra copies of creature. We don't necessarily need this any creatures but that's all i have to say for now i just need i just wanted to do a quick update on the auras the sideboard guide if you're suffering from losing against squirrel combo decks or life gain decks that exist in the ladder right now there are answers to it but anyways i have two games for you guys the first game is going to be the absent order list just to showcase the deck if you haven't seen the deck. And the second game is going to be the Orzhov list going up against a life gain deck that I found it pretty enjoyable. It was just unexpected. A lot of unexpected things happened that game. So do check it out. Anyways, and as always, if you guys enjoyed the video so far, leave a like and a comment. And if you haven't subscribed, really appreciate if you did and enjoy the rest of the video got a great hand here start off with godless shrine and thought seize and we can then play curse of silence next Ooh, what is this i think we want to get rid of bone crusher giant here i think that sounds pretty good And I think I just want to play Core Spirit Dancer because I know for a fact that, like, looking at their hand, they have to top deck an answer to this Core Spirit Dancer. So the chances are they probably won't have answers to it. But if they do find an answer to it, I'd be very sad. And they didn't. So, looking at their hand. So, they got Prismari Command next turn. So, I think I actually just want to play Kaya's Ghost Form into Rune of Might. So I could play Curse of Silence here on whatever they may have, but I actually think I'm going to name Granted from Fae of Wishes because this lets them take it from wish, wish a card from their sideboard and who knows what they might have, right? So they could have things like Brazen Borrower, things like that. So... I don't really care about any of these cards in their hand at the moment. So let's see, I'm going to play this out first, the cycle additional card. So I'm going to name Granted. Because this will be 6 mana which is completely un unplayable.
So whatever their uh, whatever card they might have to combat this right now, this board is basically called off. So we, from next game, I'm gonna be naming probably Express Obliteration after sideboarding in three more copies of Curse of Silence. Wow, so they do play Brazen Borrower in their main deck. But... I think that's fine. What's nice is that... Even if they... They can't really kill this core spirit dancer anyways next turn. This is actually a really good card that I picked up here. Let's us see more of what they play. So here... Archmage Charm. Smari Command. I think I'm just gonna take the Chandra is gonna be minus four on something. So maybe I just take that. Because they can't kill these anyways. They're taking additional three here. So they do play Brazen Borrower main deck. Wow, that's very interesting. I think I have them in a complete lockdown. I don't think they can actually get out of this situation. So they could... So what are they trying to do? What are they trying to do here? Oh, I bricked. Wow. Okay. So they steal the 1-1. One, one. Wait, they don't even have 3 blue. That's a yikes. So it's just really unfortunate, right? That... I ended up bricking here because I had almost guaranteed lethal. I should have probably played on another creature before doing that. Okay, so... Three copies of Curse of Silence. Let's see. And minus two dead weight. And then Helios Punishment, I don't think there's anything else to actually sideboard in. 
I think it's just generally a good matchup for me. Ooh. You'd love to see that. They're not going to be happy about these taxes. I'm just going to get rid of Brazen Borrower. Nice. So I could play Course Spirit Dancer here, but I do really want to tax their expressive iteration. And then... Is there anything else I want to tax? Prismari command? So now, even if they have 3 mana next turn, they can't Prismari command my core spirit dancer. So they only have a copy. It, it does seem like they have something. I think it's actually just Field of Ruins. I probably just should have just played Curse of Silence. My one copy of Flames coming in so clutch. Look at all those. <laughs> I love Curse of Silence. It's just so good. They can't play their Express Federation. It's, it costs too much. Four mana draw a spell. I might actually just go Curse of Silence again. Yeah, I think I'm actually just going to go Curse of Silence again. They're going to be so unhappy about this. Oh my god, these Curse of Silences are so nasty. I, I, I kind of half expected me to draw a land there. But I didn't, which is kind of sad. Wow. Wow, I got punished. I got punished hard. Can I get a land? Thank you. Now will they cast their 6 mana expressive iteration? Can't wait. Ooh. Gold span dragon, you say? That does help alleviate. This has lifelink though, so. It does help out quite a bit. Actually, hmm. If I shock myself, I go down to two, play Sithis, 
Sentinel's Eyes, Sentinel's Eyes, and Cartouche. And I go to 5. Then I'm going to attack for 6. And I'm going to go to 11. If I do this. And then that. And Chandra's dead. We take those. I mean, the treasure does make it so that expressive iteration can be casted for, I guess, two mana in this case. They decided to attack, play that first. <laughs> Oh yeah, six mana expressive iteration. Classic. It can't cast that. They could have Petty Theft, so I'm actually going to play this out first. Because if they happen to have Petty Theft, and I thought sees I go down to 5, then I can't lifelink with Loris, I might actually die. These Curse of Silence are no joke. I'm actually gonna call Archmage Charm, I think. There you go. Now Archmage Charm costs 5 mana. I kind of want to know what that is, the last card. Do I want to shock myself to 11? I think that's fine. Niv Mizzet. Okay. I mean, I'm so glad that I actually did it. Memory Deluge is something that I could have called as well. Looks like they got Petty Theft. The fact that they're hovering over Loris makes me think that. Dragon fire. Okay, we'll just do it again. I mean, at this point, wouldn't you just want to concede? Oh, the game is just over. Oh, 
curse of silence how i love thee okay we keep that hand we got hushbringer with the court the sram please be a life gain deck oh that could be life gain deck no freaking way oh my god <laughs> Why are you playing Mana Tithe? Why do you play Soul Guy Lantern? Hello? Are we playing the same game? I I'm confused. I is this not Life Game Deck? Faithful Absence! Is this... Is... It might actually not be a life gain deck. Maybe it isn't a life gain deck. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea anymore. Oh my god. It is a life gain deck that plays Soul Guy Lantern and Mana Tithe in their deck with Faithful Absence. No freaking way. Okay, no freaking way. I just got dead weight into dead weight. <laughs> what is this game I'm playing? What am I playing? Hopefully nothing too crazy. Wow, that's probably like the best combination you can ask for. Okay, I, I just got scammed. I just got scammed. Oh my god, my third Hushbringer. No freaking way. <laughs> oh my goodness. What will they be feeling after that? They're like, I had everything to answer their Hushbringer. And look at that, Hushbringer instant concede. That's what we'd like to see. But that was that was so crazy. 